Hey guys, welcome back to T-Bone Tech. In today's video, we are reviewing the GVM LT50S Lite. So I got the kit, which actually includes two of them, and it also includes the stands that hold them up. And the two of these actually only cost $260, about $130 for each if you buy them together. And if you buy them separately, it's gonna run you around $165 for a single one. So the second light is actually right over here, and I'm using it to light up the background and I have the diffuser on it and I also have one of these colored blue sheets that's making this blue hue over here on the background. And then of course the one over here is currently off and on this one I'm gonna be demonstrating all the different buttons and all the features of these two lights. Okay, so first off let's talk about some of the features and the build quality. As far as build quality goes, it's not really good. It, everything here is pretty plasticky. The barn doors are completely made out of plastic instead of metal, but they work decently enough, again, considering the price. Moving on to the back here, we can see they do a good job of hiding the power supply in the bottom so it stays out of the way and that's pretty nice rather than having it on the ground. Of course, if it's on the ground, people can trip over it and it just becomes a hassle. I really like how they allow you to uh, mount it right here inside. Now, as far as the controls here go, let's go ahead and turn on the light with the on off switch. And here we can see we have a tiny little uh, LED display. And then there's two knobs here. The left knob allows us to change the brightness of the panel and it goes from 10% all the way to 99%. As you guys can see here, it is making a pretty big difference here on the background as I change those settings. Now, something to note is when you go over 69%, it actually turns the fan on. So here we can see we're at 61, 65, and then after 69%, the fan is gonna turn on, which makes it pretty noisy and not great for video. It's gonna be fine for stills, but for video, you're definitely gonna be able to hear that fan spinning. So let's go ahead and crank it up to 70% here. And as soon as I hit 70, the fan starts running. And of course, all the way from 70 to 99%, the fan is gonna run 99% is the max because you don't have another little uh, space to put 100%. So 99 is basically 100%. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear that right now, but the fan is running and it's pretty loud. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the microphone a little bit closer to it and see if you guys can hear that. I definitely can hear it and it's very distracting and loud for me. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna show up here on video. So let's bring this down uh, back to 68% or 69% where it's not making that noise. All right, and the second knob here actually allows us to control the color temperature of the light. So it goes from 3200 Kelvin all the way to 5600 Kelvin. So right now the light is at 5600 and now let's go ahead and adjust it here all the way to 3200. And here you can see it makes a pretty big difference. So again, right now we're at 3200 and if we adjust it, we can go all the way to 5600. And here you guys can see that difference between the color temperatures here. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, these lights do have a diffuser. So right now the diffuser is on, but once it's on, it's very, very hard to get off. And it's actually very, very hard to put on in the first place. And that is very, very annoying. You have to bang it and give it a bunch of hits for it to slide in. And once it's in, it's very hard to get out. Now these lights also come with these colored sheets and installing these sheets into the light is almost just as hard as putting the little diffuser on. So you kind of have to slide it in and guide it down and then it's gonna kind of you know pop up right here and it's just not ideal. It works if you you know spend a couple minutes to get it to get it in but it's just not a great way of doing things. So let me turn the lights on and then show you guys kind of how it looks on my background with the you know color turned up to, uh, let's put it up to 69 here. So the max brightness about the fan turning on. And here we can see it's doing a good job. It's just the fact that getting it in there is a really hassle and kind of a hack way to do it. But once it's on there, it does a really good job of illuminating the background. So if I put this off camera here, you see that we have the nice blue and the red kind of complementing each other and coming together here in the middle. And these lights are really good for lighting up backgrounds. Now getting back to the build quality and construction of these lights, they're not built too well. So here you can see, even with this crank down to the max here, we have a lot of shakage here when just moving it around. So it's gonna shake a lot. And then if we want to change the angle of the light, we can unlock it here. And everything here is plastic and not really high quality, uh, but it definitely works. It's just these lights aren't gonna be very steady and rigid, but that's kind of what you should expect when paying so little 
for some nice LED lights. But considering the price is kind of what I expected uh, for these LED lights, so I'm not really disappointed that they're made all out of plastic, but obviously I would rather prefer something like all metal and it would just, you know, make it nice and rigid and just feel a lot better. But unfortunately with these, you're getting plastic. So in the back here, we do have a V-mount uh, power slot so we can attach a battery. A battery doesn't come with these for free, but you can buy one. Uh, and that's gonna allow you to power this completely remote. So it's gonna be great if you're, you know, outdoors and need a little bit of extra lighting for your subject for taking photos or even video, you are able to attach a battery. Now I actually don't have any of these batteries, so I can't test that out right here, but I can only imagine it works pretty well. I mean, just power after all, it shouldn't be that complicated. Okay, so I just set up both these lights here to be my key lighting and they're about a hands width away from me, just a little bit less than that. And I set both these lights to 69% power. That way those loud and noisy fans don't turn on and the settings I have here on my camera indoors without any other light in the room is 1 1 60th of a second shutter speed at aperture f2.8 and the ISO that I'm using is only ISO 150. Now I can go ahead and turn these up or turn these down so I'm going to go ahead here and turn these down to the minimum 10% so you guys can get a good idea of what the lights look like at 10%. So right now we have the light set to 10% and as you guys can see, the shot is underexposed. But lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and crank these up to 99% so you guys can see how bright they get up to it. And again, all the settings on the camera aren't changing. We're in manual mode, so nothing is changing here. It's all staying at the same. So here we cranked it up to 99% uh, on the left. And now let's go ahead and crank this up to 99%. And I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but the fans are running. I'm gonna stop talking for a second, see if you guys can hear that or not. But as you guys can see, I am very, very overexposed. So to compensate for this, I have to stop down my aperture, uh, probably about a stop or two. So let me go ahead and stop down my aperture one stop to F4, and let's see if that brings us to the proper exposure. And yeah, this is probably about right. I'm not overexposed and I'm not really underexposed from what I can see here. So from 69% to 100% is probably about a full stop if you have both lights on and they are about a meter away from your subject. Right now I'm squinting because these lights are really bright. So overall the quality of these two lights is pretty decent. They are plasticky and they're not great, but they're definitely going to get the job done. And I think the price coming in at two for $260 really makes sense for people who are just starting to get in YouTube or if they're starting to get into photography. And if you're just trying to make some side income with your camera, I think these lights are going to be pretty decent. Lighting is the number one thing that matters most in video. You can have a $5,000 camera, but if you have the lighting wrong, your video results are going to end up less than desirable. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this honest review. If you did, make sure to give me a big thumbs up down below. And of course, make sure to subscribe button and then you'll be notified every single time. Time, I upload a brand new video just like this one to my YouTube channel. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.